Uh, I cannot name the person that I discussed with. My discussion was about the possibility of raising one trillion US dollars, right? And uh, the answer that I got was from from Thomas said that that's not a problem at all. With Singapore's triple A financial, brother, we brother, can, we can mobilize any amount of money. The, the, the only issue is do we have enough people or cap capable people or trustworthy people who know how to use the money effectively? So this is the critical problem. So it's a, it's, it boils down to the mindset problem. Unless we have a new generation of young people or, or, or older people who are capable of mobilizing uh, capital and technology and working with the Southeast Asian counterparts, we are going to be uh, a bit behind time. So this is the, the, the question, right? So the, the speakers that we have uh, 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 brought together, like for example, Mr. Balji, uh, it would be very important for him to talk about how, how, do you, how does the media, right? The newspapers, the, 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 the electronic media and so on, how do we use the media to kind of reopen the Singaporean mind, right? It's, it's really the issue is mind versus media. Okay, then we have uh, Melvin Tan who will be talking about the, the the Swiss model because one of the propositions we we put forward in the last session is that Singapore's uh, five uh, community development councils should be turned into five uh, local governments. That means there will be five HDBs, five uh, URAs, five uh, MOEs, and let them uh, decide uh, on their own what sort of policy they want to exercise and let them compete with each other who can do better. And then I have um, Mr. Uh, Yi Jen Yong, um, who is going to talk about uh, at the grassroots level, at the operational level in the community, you know, what actually happens? How do you, how do you get people to come out of, the, of their shell and to think uh, creatively? Uh, then I have, uh, we have Koo Sui Yong here, who is a real estate expert, right? Uh, he and I have, and together with Yu Lam Kiong, has worked on a, a proposal about how we can uh, 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 change the financial model of the HDB, particularly for the young people, so that they, the young people don't get into a debt trap. Because once they are in the debt trap, right, they have to pay huge amounts of money to to uh, to own their flat, right? They will be very afraid to do anything, right? And then, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, Who's the other person? Uh, yeah, and 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 also, if Han Shi can join us and make some comments about the Hong Kong situation, that will be very very helpful, to, uh, uh, Han Shi. Yeah. So thank you all very much. Uh, 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 please, uh, please uh, kick off with uh, Balji. Problem after Balji. All right. Sorry, 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 sorry about this. Sorry about. Uh, let let me start. Uh, as I said. Uh, I'm 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 glad to talk about the mind and the media, mm. as uh, as uh, King Soon put it very clearly. The media can change the mind. You know, that's a huge topic. Changing the mind is a uh, is, is a big topic. But let me let me say that to change the the mindset of the sin via the media. In Singapore, in the next, at least in my lifetime, maybe I got another five years to live. <laughs> uh, in that time, in that time, I think it is going to be impossible. Why I'm saying it is impossible? Because it's a structural problem. You know? I know the, the government ministers like to use this word structural. Let me explain. Structural means that the, the system in Singapore, which Lee Kuan Yew brought about, go back to 1974, when the Newspaper Presses, Presses Printing Act was introduced and changed many times, basically means that there is really no competition for one media. And Lee Kuan Yew wanted to make sure that we just had the Straits Times. Why? Because he could then get all the things that he wanted through the Straits Times, just one one newspaper group. And this has stuck for a long time, although there were newspapers, media that came and went like 
the Singapore Herald, for example, the Eastern Sun, for example, but the, the, the Straits Times reign supreme. Now, how does the media in this operating in this operating environment to go in there and change the media? I'm not sure how many of you watch uh, Walid Jumblat's interview with uh, Jamie Ho, the editor of the Straits Times. Yeah, I I, I know why Su Su Sui Hong is, is Sui Yong is shaking his head. Uh, I didn't watch it too, but I read <laughs> I read I just saw the first. A uh, couple of minutes, and I said, "No, I'm not going to watch this," because he started off by saying that there is no censorship in Singapore. <laughs> let me let me repeat this: there is no censorship of Singapore. Now, the second one, even worse, is there is no self censorship in Singapore. Right now, when you have the editor of the Straits Times. Fortunately or unfortunately, is the really the only player, media player in town, saying that you know, you know, there's no future. But having said having said that, and in a, in a kind of a very uh, pessimistic uh, tone, that the media in Singapore cannot, not in my lifetime for sure, change the mindset of the Singaporean. Now, I, I, I am a uh, pessimist in many ways, but let me try and look at it from an optimistic point of view. Don't, and secondly, uh, the other point is that we have a social media. The social media, I mean, there are many that have come. Some of them do very good work. Uh, at one time, the online citizen used to do very, very good work. They, they are not around anymore. I don't see them anymore. Uh, to, to, to run a good online service, you need money. Who is going to put money? Maybe the $1 trillion that King Soon said that Tomasek can, we can get may help to, to bring that, that, uh, uh, that media, that balanced media, you know, in, 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 into fruition. Uh, I, I, and so you have a situation. The 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 third point I want to make is that the biggest the biggest player in the media market is none other than the government, right? Now who is paying? Now the Straits Times is in is in big trouble because the online market has swept uh, their business their 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 money away. And now they are depending on uh, they are they are going they are with a begging bowl, and the government is giving them money, you know, hundred over million dollars I think uh, per year. No, that that means that you become even more dependent on the government. At one time, Straits Times was a very very cash rich company when I when I was there. Not uh, SP, it was a cash rich company. I mean, uh, uh, and and that was one of the things that Lee Kuan Yew wanted. Lee Kuan Yew wanted to make. SPH, Straits Times, a very, very profitable company. Now, would a profitable company in Singapore want to do anything against the PAP government? My, my question, my answer is no, they, they won't want to do it, right? So the media, again, I'm being very pessimistic, the media can do very little, right? Don't depend on the media. We have to depend on the citizens to bring in more uh, opposition politicians into parliament. Right? We now have okay, quite quite a good number, of, uh, number uh, a small number of people. Just go back and look at twenty eleven elections when the PAP vote went down to sixty point one percent, the lowest historic low. What happened after that? Suddenly, you saw the Pioneer Package being introduced. You know, many, many things that came out uh, that, that were introduced in Singapore. The PAP knows that as long as the population is with me, as long as I give CDC vouchers, 
as long as I give uh, 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 skills future payouts, I'm fine, right? And this is the point I think King Sung made earlier that when you have a population whose knowledge base is quite poor, and I, I retired from the active journalism uh, since about 15, 20 years ago, I've had more time to talk to people. And this is one thing that I, 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 I had kind of uh, hit me. And that is that there are people who are very angsty. There are people who want to do a lot of things, people who are very angry with the government, but their depth of knowledge is very on the surface. So when you raise certain issues, they are kind of not sure what, what is this all about. So they want to change, but they don't have the depth of knowledge. And uh, it could be various reasons. It could be, it could be because of the education system, it could be because uh, they, uh, if you if you read the media, you don't you don't get that 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 uh, extra knowledge, right? And other than just what the ministers say, so if you take the state Sam's as an example today, the 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 the, the page one lead is on uh, on what uh, Mr. Vivian Balakrishnan said in Parliament. It is just reporting what Vivian Balakrishnan said in Parliament. There is no. It's a very important speech when I saw it. You know, to oh, say see, that. Let me interrupt. Yeah. Uh, sure, what, sure. what is your view about the the internet in, that that is available now? Right. There's okay. so much information that yep. that people are exposed to. Would hmm. wouldn't that make a difference? Uh, yeah, you raise a good point. But my view is, I mean, I'm, I'm very uh, not active in social media, but I, 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 I listen to social media. I read social media a lot, but they are not, they, in, a, in a way, they are, again, you know, because we, they don't have the experience of, I mean, the experienced journalists are not there. People who are writing for social media, and I'm making it this a very no, no, general. No, I'm not just talking about social media. I'm talking about, okay. let's say, some of the... Uh investigative reporters that are uh, looking at world issues right uh and 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 very very critical about what's happening in ukraine in gaza and so on and they are producing okay. a lot of very interesting information has oh, that, that any impact at all i doubt it i doubt it you know because why if, do you if, doubt it okay because i can only give you from my own personal example right my the people I meet on a on a daily basis, different types of people. Uh, some of them are very educated. Their knowledge, their knowledge of Ukraine is very is very on the surface. You know, uh, take take uh, Hamas, Hamas versus Israel, right? Although it should not be seen as Hamas versus Israel, because if you look at it that way, then you only get a very perfunctory knowledge. But you should look at it as a Palestinian issue versus Israel, right? So I don't, uh, people's knowledge base, whether it's uh, history of Middle East, for example, it goes back to 1947, right? But the, the knowledge base is not there, you know? Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Singaporeans say, of course, there are some people, very small people, I mean, very small number of people, I don't think they have the knowledge. And if no, you for don't example, have... uh, for example, mm. I'm, I'm talking about the impact of the internet information. You know, mm. when when Singapore made a statement that mm. the Russian uh, attack uh, mm. on on Ukraine was unprovoked, yep. right? Yep, yep. And then um, some months later, you have Shamugam mm. saying that no, no, not necessarily. There were there were other factors at play. Mm. So there's a shift in the in the position. Do you think the yep. shift was because the PAP government is concerned that there's new information coming into Singapore and Singaporeans may look at the government position differently. Okay. What does the... It's possible. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure. But the point is, what if, you're a, if, if the political party, especially in Singapore, wants to win elections? Right? First point. Second point, how many people know that Shanmugam has said this? 
it has never it has never emerged in my conversations with people right there will be a group of people i think it's a very small group of people people like uh, king soon people like tommy ko but what can you people do <laughs> so <laughs> nothing. It, ah nothing yeah so so you 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 need the population the voters you know majority of the voters to be uh, up there with the news know what is happening think yeah. through the news you know so so Why? so so the the interpretation of the of the reaction exactly by the government exactly. is actually uh, uh, aim at external factors right in yeah. order yeah. to 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 appease certain critical positions that may be possible. taken by china yeah. or india or other places so it's a it's foreign possible. policy response exactly i think i think you're absolutely right you know but that, but also the the take today's uh, yesterday's speech in parliament by vivian balakrishnan right yeah it's a it's quite a significant statement right because he says uh, israel has gone too far mm -hmm. right it's a significant statement as as, as far as I, I as far as i can yes uh, uh, say it's a very very significant statement israel singapore has been quite pro israel all the while so so the, if I am reading this, if if a general, if many people who read the Straits Times, page one story, will they think through this? Why is the minister saying this now? Right? What does this mean? And to make it worse, as as uh, uh, the topic that I, I'm, I'm I'm talking about, the media, the media doesn't help in analyzing the news. Right? Where is the analysis? The analysis may come. Uh, maybe a few days later, and it'll be in the in the um, the comment perspective pages. How many people read comment perspective pages, right? Your ordinary Singaporean, the voters, even your younger people, they don't read this, right? So you 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 the 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 PAP government is in a very happy position at least for now, but when or if they cannot deliver good economic growth that's when the problems will start i think you know and if you look at the budget i mean the the latest budget you will see you know one clear indicator to me is the days of high growth are over right we used to have 5 6 7% you know now it's talking about 2 to 3% maybe even lower and and they are trying very hard to to boost skills future right okay i'll 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 pay the money maybe you have to put in a bit of money but look at the courses that have been offered are toilet they cleaning. the cost sorry toilet cleaning the big issue <laughs> toilet <laughs> yes toilet i didn't want to mention that no but toilet <laughs> cleaning is one of them but the the point i'm trying to raise is i couldn't find even one course that really will help our economy you know the 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 they call it now deep tech was there anything on deep tech i didn't see any right so what is all this about you know what is this money being dished out for maybe is to make sure that they uh, the public you know can co continue to can continue to have a job uh, can continue to have a job but it's the most important thing is to get jobs in in sectors which are the growth winners right and i don't see i don't see any there you know i use this now come to uh, education which is my favorite subject because i have two grandsons you know 15 one and the other is 10 i talk to them quite a bit and and uh, when they were when they were in uh, neighborhood school up to primary three, they are, they are, they are, the way they were kind of, um, the mind, the mind was so closed. You know? Today, both of them are inter international schools, you know, because my son-in-law is a, is, a, is a foreigner, so he could get the children into an international school. And they, have, they do have some kind of money to, to get to send them to international schools. You know, I've seen my 15-year-old grandson in an international school, for the last maybe seven years. And I see 
a total transformation in him. What, what do I mean? He is so confident of himself. You know, he, 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 they all live with us in, in, a, in a private estate. He has become, he is now known as the mayor of Clover. Whoa. My, 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 my neighbor describes him. We live in Clover Estate. Hey, your 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 grandson is a it's like a mayor, you know. He knows everybody here. He goes and talks to everybody, even some of the people I don't know, right? So the confidence level has really gone up, and that is very important. If you so want this to is something in... that uh, 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 Jen Zhong may want to comment later on ah, the okay. on the school, you know, on the yeah. school system of how why the young people are so timid and uh, uh, unadventurous and so on and so forth. So I think yeah. this is a very important topic which we should develop more, okay? Thank you, yeah, thank you. Uh, okay. uh, Can I just you... interject? Uh, because sure. uh, uh, we promised each speaker 10 minutes. Okay, <laughs> I think, sorry, uh, sorry, no... sorry. Yeah, so... Yeah. And our attitudes are how, all, all uh, still very, very focused on islands, small island city-state. Right, all the conversations we hear are actually only about small issues regarding re, uh, re, in in re, in relation to Singapore. Singaporeans must think beyond Singapore. We must think bigger, but we are not we are not trained to think bigger. That's our problem. We are too small minded. The island, the the what do you call it, the little red dot has got into our head. Right, we should be thinking of ourselves as a much bigger red dot, not a small little red dot. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Prof. So uh, before we can go on to the big thinking, right, let's try and bring it back to our discussion today. Yeah. We started off with Baoji and uh, media. So I'm really happy because we got a few people from media here today. We have Baoji, of course. We have uh, To Han Shi, who is based in Hong Kong. And a surprise guest, Mr. Terry Su. Uh, <laughs> Terry, uh, maybe do uh, you want to talk? I think the three of you will have a very interesting discussion. So let me just uh, put you three up. Uh, give me a minute. Hanshi and uh, Terry, hold on. Huh? Can you uh, can you guys uh, unmute yourself? Okay, uh, I hear some noise. Yep, yeah, I'm here. Can you okay. hear me? Uh, yes, Baoji. Uh, good, yeah. good, good. So basically, uh, you mentioned in the beginning about uh, Wallet's uh, interview with Jamie Ho, who is a current editor in the uh, Straight Times. Uh, yep. I don't know whether you you re you know this, but Wallet actually interviewed Bertha Hansen. Uh, I know after one or two days after, after that. After that, but, yeah, yeah. What what she spoke about is very different from Jamie. I think yep. uh, you guys are what you call the last of the Mohicans, uh, which is mentioned in your <laughs> book. So yeah. you guys were the uh, great pioneers uh, who dare to speak the truth. So uh, we all know about how the uh, government uh, tries to spin a certain narrative. I think a lot of people here are upset about uh, what they're talking about in Gaza, that you know, uh, the, the, con the genocide actually only uh, happened after 7 October 2023, which is ridiculous. Lah. Uh, but more and more people are using social media, alternate media to find for themselves uh, uh, what is the true picture. So uh, my question to, uh, in, in, in your speech earlier, you mentioned you didn't think much of uh, uh, online media and uh, people who actually make an effort to try and you know, get the, uh, more more facts uh, from cybersphere. So... Uh, Terry, uh, are you currently in uh, uh, Taiwan or or Thailand? I'm currently in Taiwan. Yeah, okay. So we got three perspectives, the Singapore perspective, the Hong Kong perspe perspective, and Taiwan perspective. So uh, maybe Hanshi, uh, what, what do you think of uh, media control? Well, first of all, I was really shocked that um, I didn't watch the Tay Tarek online session, but... I was shocked that the street science editor Jamie would say on the session uh, that you know there's not even self censorship in the mainstream media like the Straits uh -huh. Times, because uh, before I joined the Business Times of Singapore, I had a preliminary conversation uh, with a certain SPH editor whom I will not name, but he just told me quite frankly that um, you know SPH practices self censorship. Um, that's the first point. 
The second point is, I mean, in, in some ways, I think people like Terry Shield better answer this, but the question is how much the Singapore government can regulate even online independent media. They do things like they, they block uh, Asia Sentinel website in Singapore, you know, and around roughly 25 years ago, roughly, uh, somehow Centercom, which was started by this Singaporean man called Tan Chong Ki, it was a very independent and freewheeling online internet discussion chat group. And somehow, for some reason, which I just, um, it closed down. So the question is, um, is there much uh, space left uh, for, and then somehow for some, you know, is there much, can there still be space for even independent media, like the independent, uh, the online citizen, which is run by Terry in Taiwan, and whatever other internet chat groups, you know. Uh, new narrative and John. Yeah. Uh, Terry, you want to say something? I'm oh, sorry, well, what's your question? Oh, okay. Anyway, let me, let me say something. So, um, I think the question here will be like, yeah, like what Hanchi said, uh, can there be independent media in Singapore? Uh, I think there can be, but the thing here is, right, they, they would, uh, they, if you're up to a certain size, meaning you're up to a certain kind of, uh, uh, scale, they will try, they will definitely move in and try to regulate you. If you are just simply say a one, two person trying to do your stuff, uh, take for example, plan B. Plan B was actually doing a uh, Spotify TikTok. So at this point, uh they do have a sizable following, but then they uh and they do touch on sensitive topics, but then the kind of reach that they have is still something in which the government uh does not see the need to move in to plan them down. So, so uh, the thing here is there are a lot of independent, so as in there, are, there, are, there are quite a number of small independent uh, media who are trying to actually uh, take their mark. But, uh, but the moment that they reach a sizable following, they will definitely, uh, the government will move in. And one thing, I, I, and Hanchi, I think we, we have to bear in mind one thing that is that the government, right, from the very beginning, they have been doing one thing, which is every time a new media outlet comes out, they will try to see whether or not they can co-op them. They, they will definitely, uh, um, uh, I, I saw that in, uh, uh, I saw that in the instance where, you know, when Andrew Lowe started up Public House uh, after he came out from TOC. So what happened is that immediately, right, uh, he got an interview with uh, Tan Ren Jin. Uh, and, and then this, uh, and I believe in the case of, uh, in the case of Bata Hansen Middle Ground, they also secured a interview with uh, some minister or so, something. So every time right, when a new media outlet comes out, the, the government will try to arrange uh, a reach to, to this outlet and see where they stand. Is there a possibility of co-opting them uh, to be uh, like a mouthpiece for the government? Or would they be like a independent, uh, unable to uh, be unable to be compromising on issues? So uh, very clearly, when it comes to like middle ground, they were uh, uh they were independent. They were uncompromising on some issues. I believe it was the uh what is what case was it? Uh, I think it was the uh presidential election, uh where Haruman Yakob that really got uh, uh the government to cut ties with them. And 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 basically, uh, I think the point here is uh, uh independent media. I don't think can exist at this point. At this point, cannot exist in Singapore. Uh, uh you take take my independent uh, my media for example. If you're if you're independent and you would want to uh so called do uh investigative stories like what uh uh Prof Professor Tay has actually cited, you want to do really hard hitting stories. The moment you do that, they will throw you with Pogma, They will throw you with uh. Uh, Pika, if you're based in Singapore, but currently because I'm based in Taiwan, uh, Pika does not apply to me. But Pogma uh, apparently does. Uh, and, and Pogma, as you can see from the various correction direction that they issued, they can go for you for any tiny little stuff. Uh, and it, not, it may not necessarily uh, be things that you got wrong. For example, in the case of Ke uh, Kenneth General Adnan's latest post, uh, Gatsi TOC, 
we got correction direction, not because we said anything wrong, but we included a link to uh, KJ's uh, post, which they bought. Out. So, so and, and that, that correction direction itself, right, is justification for the government to subsequently throw you with a DOL, which is a de declaration of online uh, location, which TOC got. And that really uh, basically throws a spanner into the whole operation because uh, three things, three things that people, you all have to understand uh, that comes from DOL. One is, it's illegal to contribute, financially contribute to the operation of this particular website. Number two, it is illegal to uh, be in any form of commercial uh, arrangement with this, uh, this uh, uh, DOL. Number three is, as the operator, it's illegal to benefit financially from the operation of this uh, publication. So what it means is that uh, I don't ban your website. The website still can run, but the thing is, uh, it only can run based on your own, the owner's own contribution, financial contribution, and you cannot benefit in any way financially from the operation. So, so the thing here is, uh, going back to Hanchi's uh, point, uh, at any point of time, if you're running an operation, and, and I'm not even talking about for profit, even if it's for non-profit, it, uh, the government could just simply shut you down using uh, this uh, POPMA regulation. And, and it's actually all like a Damascus shot putting over you. You never know when your operation can be seized. Yeah, I think, I think we just let you know that. Okay, uh, yeah, I just want to, uh, hold on, let me spotlight myself. No uh, yeah, hold on. Bin, bin, bin. Okay, uh, Bauji just now earlier mentioned about 900, 900 million uh, for SPH media. Uh, so just for my understanding, because I, I haven't caught up. So previously, I believe in your book, you mentioned that Citibank uh, were one of the shareholders for uh, SPH uh, back in the 80s or something. So they have to like be uh, 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 accountable to the shareholders. But for the current structure with SPH now has become SPH media, do they still have to be accountable to the shareholders, uh, Bauji? Well, it's a, um, it's no more a listed company, right? Mm -hmm. SPH media is no more a listed company. So there is no issue of uh, being responsible to any shareholder other than the government, who is the so, biggest shareholder, right? But so I, I, no just want to, I just want yeah. to... No, I just want to add one point as... Uh, Terry was talking, you know, this thing that struck me is that, you see, the, the PAP government has got a finger in every pie, right? At one at one stage, even saying how many children you can have, if you have more, if you, if, you know, they can even make sure they restrict which school, right? You can go to uh graduate mother's policy we all know but where the media is affected is the government has although it is not a direct finger in the pie of the businessmen the businessmen are frightened to support media because they are worried that if they support an alternative media they will not the government you know you you know right the economy of singapore is basically Tomasic, most of it, Tomasic and Tomasic Link companies, right? So do they want to go and spoil their business chances with by trying to support an alternative media? They won't. You know, I have my own experience when I was on the, uh, the team that started the independent, right? When we started the independent, we had one important a uh, businessman who decided to f to pay to fund some of the, the the money and as we came to launch what happened was this businessman told us you know sorry you know i can't i can't give money he, of course he did not, never gave any reasons we didn't press him but subsequently we found out that there was somebody from government who kind of whispered in his ear he's a businessman right what do you expect him to do? So, yeah. you know, we must we must look at it. It's not just a, 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 a simple thing, you know. It's a big issue with the businessmen will never 
at least now, will not support the uh, an alternative media. So I'm so glad that we have John, you know, who has, I, I'm not sure what their business Sudhir, model Sudhir. is. Yes, uh, Sudhir uh, Varakat, you know. And I'm also very happy that there is SG Academia. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it. SG Academia has, uh, I think Charyan is, is one of those people involved in this. And he is trying to get academic to write. And to write in a way, not your academic papers, but write in a way which the public can understand. But the articles, some of the articles are very good, uh, but they appear once yeah. in a while, you know, that's one. I'm not sure the kind of traction they get. Because you have to get attraction with the public, right? In the end. You know? So uh, coming back, coming back to the, the punch and uh, Terry have mentioned, you know, it's it's really, really and if I want to call it, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's not just uh, it's not just uh, start an online media. Terry will tell you about it. It's not just starting an online media. How do you keep it going? Where's the funds coming? He's, he he mentioned to you about POFMA, right? That once you are POFMA, that means you cannot get any funding. You cannot, you cannot, right? So what do you do? What do yeah. you do? And the worst thing here is, right, uh, the, um, the, the thing that sets me uh, as an convince me to move out of Singapore is Fika. Fika is, is uh, I, I'm very sure had I not moved out from Singapore, Fika would be the first one to be used on me. Um, because Fika is based on the discretion of K. Shamugam. So K. Shamugam say, can say that, okay, you all have suspicion of like colluding with someone from overseas. I don't know who, but then again, you I think you should be. And then uh, I have to declare all the in uh, all the amounts of money uh, so of course they say that the above five thousand then you declare but then again you have to open a bank account in which you all money that you receive for your own purpose sorry your for the purpose of operation would have to go in so whether someone donate one dollar two dollar etc and I, I I'm very sure this is uh, has to do with all the crowdfunding that we had uh, for the defamation suits because we we did this uh. Uh, crowdfunding uh, to pay for the defamation suit from Lee Hsien Long. And, and all this donation was not documented, meaning uh, we don't have to declare who it is. But under PICA, would, uh, if we were to be declared as PSP, we we'll definitely would have to uh, be subjected to, to declaration. So, so I, uh, you know, we, we, we have seen a whole spate of uh, various legislation being thrown in. Uh, in 2013, we have the regulation on internet uh, uh, reporting, and, and TOC was one, one of the... In fact, I think we were the first uh, websites to be uh, made to declare to IMDA, and subsequently you have uh, POHA, which we then have to contest in court and we won, and then we have the... Uh, POFMA, which, which was subjected to the TOC, and then we have FICA. So you can see all this regulation being thrown out again and again, and ultimately for the purpose is to control the narrative, control the media landscape. It's, it's never to be uh, talking about like uh, to protect the low, uh, the, uh, what's that, the, uh, the asset population. It's really to control the narrative. Uh, and then like what Baoji mentioned is like to ensure that SVH or the CNA remains at the the core uh, means of dissemination of information. People only trust uh, this media, or, or I wouldn't say trust, they only have this media outlets to turn to. I, I would say actually that it's not uh, just uh, a battle of trust. I, yeah. To me personally, right, I think, and by the way, I'm going to put a disclaimer right here. All of us here are talking on our own personal basis. Whatever we say is not representative of any organization we may or may, may not belong to, okay? So um, I, I saw this uh, big uh, hoo-ha about the MOE thing, about uh, the lesson plan and the CCE and uh, how uh, they seem to want to put the facts in a certain way that the conflict uh, only uh, matters after 7 October 2023, which is not the case. So... Uh, I see it as trying to push uh, untruths or falsehoods onto the general populace uh, through children. And that really, really, really irked me, okay? 
And another thing I saw this morning about Sim N talking about the Fika person, Mr. Chan, uh, I'll say in Mandarin, uh, because that's, she spoke in Mandarin, said, 我们是新加坡华人, 我们不是新加坡华侨, uh, to me, uh, that, that really doesn't make sense. Because when I leave Singapore, I call myself Hua Chiao, overseas Chinese. Doesn't mean that I once I go beyond the borders of Singapore, I suddenly lose my Chinese-ness. I cannot call myself Hua Chiao. I've been calling myself Hua Chiao to, to, to uh, build rapport with other Hua Chiao, whether they are Chinese from Canada, they're Chinese from Saudi Arabia, from Tibet or Mongolia. That's how we, I build a rapport with other overseas Chinese. Now you're telling me I can't call myself Hua Chiao. I mean, this, this is very insidious because you're slowly trying to change vocabulary of our people that you are allowed to use certain phrases. Uh, you cannot use other phrases like uh, talk about Gaza or Palestine or whatever. So I don't know. Do you guys think that they're trying to, you know, slowly manipulate the mindset of Singaporeans? Or am I thinking too much? No, I think this is a very topic uh, based kind of thing. Uh, and, and not to mention this this uh, MOE intervention only came out um uh, on months after the Gaza conflict. I think what they're concerned with is the the increasing uh, emotions of uh, Muslims or or, uh, or Singaporeans sympathetic to the the plight of Palestinian in uh, in, uh, in Gaza and also the voices against the uh, Singapore's uh, uh, so-called silence over this. And, oh, okay, silence, putting aside silence, and also the oppression of those uh, voices that are voicing against, uh, those people who are voicing against the oppression that's faced by Palestinians. I think, they are, I think the government is concerned that you have a, a pop, uh, the population, the, the population who are sympathetic to the Palestinian cause are uh, having negative connotation towards the, uh, the establishment. I think this is where I think they are trying to address uh, the issue. But I don't know why MOE had to actually step in because this this should be ought to be an MFA or MHA uh, review. Uh, and basically, Chan Chun Singh threw Malik Osman under the bus. He's saying, oh, that guy also did the uh, checking earlier in November. I, I think I think we I I think I want to actually address what uh, Baoji mentioned just now in terms of uh, the uh, people are not reaching uh, being being so called uh, exposed to the ideas and the narrative because everything is actually largely on the echo chamber. I think what the Singapore government or the PAP is actually finding issue with right is that the traditional mode of me uh, medium of media, which is uh, uh, the printed and also the mainstream media, uh, and the websites, right, are, are slowly losing their influence over the general population. And in fact, a lot of, I think a lot of the people are getting their information through the non-conventional medium, uh, and largely like YouTube, TikTok, I think especially TikTok and Facebook Reels. And these are people who are not, uh, and this content are not generated by the media. These are content generated by individuals. Uh, we are actually seeing a, uh, I think a flashback back to the 2011. But, but back then 2011, we are talking about people making, writing Facebook posts. But nowadays, people are actually doing their, their own reels. They will, they will just film themselves, uh, uh, voicing about issues that they they, can, uh, they think about on TikTok, etc. And then they will, uh, based on algorithm, they'll be shut out. And you can see that the government is well aware of this issue. And that's why you can see that they are trying to uh, so-called rope in influencers, influencers from uh, various uh, different fields fashion, lifestyle. Uh, there are some photos you can see where PAP ministers, they take photos with all these influencers and they know that uh, they cannot rely on the traditional medium. Even mothership cannot bring them, uh, give them the exposure that they would, would want in the upcoming general election. They would have to rely uh, by tapping onto all this, the followers of this uh, influencers from the TikTok, especially uh, to, to make a message clear. Yeah, and this so, is where I think the opposition, uh, uh, we we have a level playing ground because really it's the content that matters rather than the reach. Even if you say, um, even if you say your page has only like thousand followers, but but that doesn't mean that your content will be only limited to one thousand. In fact, 
through the election, you might even actually gain hundred thousand followers, etc. That the speed, the speed in which how material are being disseminated is actually faster. Then it, it it really relies on the content that's being generated. Yeah, I I agree with you, uh, Terry. I think in the twenty twenty election, uh, the PP government actually wanted to uh capitalize on the COVID, uh, to to uh minimize the messaging sent out to the uh the very voters. Very. Yeah, but yeah. social media totally turned it around. I mean, just talk about PSP, la. not not the uh, politically, the, the Progress Singapore Party, which I was a member of. Uh, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok actually made very good use of TikTok and Instagram to really reach out to the younger voters. They call him Hype Beast Akong. So <laughs> that really became viral. Uh, so yeah, I think the, the opposition really have to make use of social media. Yeah. So... And, uh, Mm. But 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 in a way, it's also not so optimistic in the sense, right? In terms of how the current population is, right? Is that people nowadays tend to vote towards personality and not, uh, uh, in terms of where, where I stand in terms of policies. I uh, that 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 is actually what a lot of people give in terms of the Indonesian election. People did not see in terms of what this uh, this candidate was talking about in terms of policy, but in terms of how they was was perceive this person uh, as as an individual whether this, uh, uh and, and not look at this person past history you are talking about Jokowi son uh. so <laughs> he's uh, uh the the main candidate uh, okay so. actually until now it's still not official uh you know it's going to take a few weeks yeah and, uh, uh, the, the the votes are very clear yes. 60 yeah, 60%, yeah, 70, 60%. Yeah, you can't run away yeah correct so there won't be a second round. Uh, so yeah, no, uh, only yeah, one round. No. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know whether, Terry, you know, there was a documentary in Indonesia, Bahasa Indonesia, a few days before voting uh, from a group of journalists who actually spotlighted uh, corruption within uh, the elections and how actually, uh, we don't know, Jokowi actually influenced in the in, in manner of speaking. Yes, yes uh, we, we reported on that, but, but then it will not change the outcome of the election. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing I also want to highlight, since you mentioned uh, TikTok, right? There's this person called Jay Ishak Raju. Yes. Jay. Yes. So he's very popular in TikTok, and because he's so popular, I don't know whether they approached him earlier, but uh, since they they tried the carrot, it didn't work. They tried the stick, Pofma. So he was brought into Pofma office for questioning. Uh, but uh, I, what... I I believe he is actually being held for uh, he basically held for criminal defamation, not Pofma. Oh, the latest is it? Yeah, it's criminal defamation. But ah, they, okay. they believe they, he has been issued a, a stern warning uh, in lieu of the prosecution. So he defamed the Prime Minister? Uh, I, I think it was the right out road case. Ah. I, if I'm not wrong, I, I, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so it was criminal defamation. But, but, but the thing here about criminal defamation, right, is that... Uh, the person who is alleged to be defamed may not turn up in court, and that's the that's the worst thing about criminal defamation. So, so you don't even have to prove that that defamation has been occurred. Yeah, this is the one that I went to jail for. Yeah. <laughs> no, but how can you be found guilty if, let's say, the accuser doesn't turn up in court? I know, but you uh, the prosecution simply have to prove that there's basis to believe that what is said will have defamed the person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So and then the court uh, and the court to to actually um take the position uh with the prosecution. Yeah. Okay. Um yeah. so unless the three of you have other things you want to discuss, I want to turn the discussion over to the business side and volunteerism. If it's okay with you guys. Can I just can I just uh, yeah, go ahead. just a very, very uh, quick point that what really concerns me is of course we have TikTok, we have uh, social media, we have internet media. The point really is to what extent these people can engage in some kind of an intelligent debate. Mm. Right? Which is what I am worried as a Singaporean. Mm. We need intelligent debate. You know, the state science is not going to provide that. So at least we can find Something else, Joan is a good example. You know, I think they are on. I think they are doing something good, but for how long? I hope they are there for a longer period. But knowing 
what has happened to that kind of those kind of publications long time ago from the Singapore Herald days, you know. I, I, I think that that is where the focus should be, first point. Now, in uh, added to this point is, it's not that we don't have a good journalists around. Look at the number of journalists really trained. I mean, I, I, I went through the SPA system. It's a very good system. It really trains you. It's a hot house that trains you to do good journalism, good in quotes, you know, which means check your facts, make sure that uh, check your facts, make sure that your writing is balanced. Everything is, has, has been there, right? Now, do we find that? Can we find that? That is a problem, isn't it? To find that kind, and you can get the journalists. It's not that. I meet my old friends who are ex-journalists, still very engaged, you know, in talking. There is a way that maybe a way can be found to bring these people together. The people who have spent a lot of time in journalism, who believe in Singapore, who believe in ba balanced journalism, how to get them together, right? And 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 see what we can do with them to produce something that we all can be proud of. Can can uh, let me let me interject here. Can Friday conversations, which is what we are doing, be such a vehicle? Uh, you mentioned, Balji mentioned earlier on about the 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 lack of knowledge of most people yep. is yep. very very pronounced in Singapore, right? Yeah. So maybe one of the important things that needs to happen is basically public education on many key issues which affect our lives, right? Yep. So maybe we should have a series of uh uh, dis uh, uh discussions and presentations on important topics that affect us, right? So uh, we could use uh, our Friday conversations, use our Zoom, our Zoom uh, our platform for that purpose, you know? Because maybe I'm too ambitious to uh, push the idea of a new kind of Singapore. But before we go to a new kind of Singapore, maybe we better understand what the heck is Singapore about? <laughs> <laughs> to start yeah. with, right? So maybe media is one issue, Housing is another issue. Education is another issue. The different uh, ethnic groups in Singapore, the Teochews, Hokkien's, Hakkas, and so on. What role did they play in making the Singapore economy right? Who are the who are the people in Singapore that uh, we can trust? Uh, because I had a very interesting conversation with a young thirty-eight year old guy recently, uh, who is concerned about the Singapore DNA. So let's talk about the Singapore DNA. What are those values that are deeply embedded in our consciousness, right? And when I suggested that there are actually, there are many, but the three important ones, and I have experienced it myself, is number one, we don't care what kind of color of your skin. We don't care what country you come from. We just don't care about your what you look like or anything like that, provided you are sincere, number one. Provided number two, you are capable. And provided number three, you are a fair person, right? So, for example, I know my own MP here in, in Bukit Batok, Mr. Murali. He's an Indian guy. And he's uh, very popular amongst within the Chinese community here, right? Because they sense that he is sincere. They sense that he is uh, capable. And they sense that he's a fair person, right? There are other dark-skinned persons that we will not mention the name. <laughs> <laughs> but he's very capable. We know what he can do. He's a very tough guy. But we, we cannot sense that he has any sincerity, nor do we sense that he has any sense of fair play at all. Right? So there's a kind of person that, although he has very is in a very powerful position, we totally dislike. So this is the, the issue, right? So I think that uh, these are the kind of uh, issues that I hope uh, Friday conversation and, 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 and please, all of you, suggest topics that we can take up uh, in our next sessions and, and, and so on, so that we can spend this whole year, right? Uh, educating ourselves about who we are and what are we thinking and so on. And with perspectives from different countries, right? Hansi, you can re you can reflect on on the Hong Kong 
situation? How, why is the Hong Kong people different from Singapore people, right? For example, mentality wise. And Terry, when you're in, in Taiwan, tell us about, you know, what is your experience in Taiwan about Taiwan people? Why are they different from Singaporeans, right? And so on, right? So let's 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 spend the next uh, uh, many sessions, right, o over this year, uh, really learning about ourselves, right? What do you think? Well, uh, Keng Chun, I, I I like the idea. I like the idea very much. Yes. And uh, let me just try and narrow it. You know. Okay. Instead of uh, making it very expansive, you know. Yeah. When I say when I mean narrow it, I mean what is the problem that we find with Singaporeans today. The okay. basic problem. My right. view, their lack of knowledge. Yes. Deep knowledge, you know. When I mean, they, they know they are not aware of what happened 1965, yeah. right? Or what happened 1959? Or what happened yeah. with, uh, let's say, Chi uh, Sun Juan? You know? What did he yeah. do? Why did he become yeah. such a public enemy number one? Yeah. I was talking to a group of people. They didn't even know that he went on a hunger strike, yeah. right? That they didn't even know that he, this is what he said to the uh, Prime Minister Go Chok Tong at that time, you know? No, these are to me so basic. Yes. And, and I'm talking about people who are about my age, who don't, who don't have a, 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 a understanding, a, a deep understanding. And maybe I shouldn't even use the word deep. They need to understand Singapore. Okay, they so need... so one yeah, issue that is what I think the, the, yeah, the history sorry. of Singapore in mm. the personalities that uh, we can identify yeah. with those historical periods. So that's one yeah. topic area. Yeah. Any yeah. other suggestion? I've got to go now, but let me just uh, interject very quickly. First of all, I'm very grateful to Terry Shi. Yesterday, he published a column of mine commenting on the Gaza issue. Mm. Um, and foreign interference and the foreign interference law. What I want to say is that um, what I notice uh, right now is, um, you know, the sense I get is that the Singapore government fears very intense emotions on both sides of the debate on Gaza, and they're trying to cool things down. But in the process, they might possibly try to chill down the debate and uh, either clamp down the, and possibly clamp down the debate. And I fear going forward, the Singapore government is going to clamp down a lot of other debates like Debates over China and USA, do you side with China, do you side with America? They just got to clamp down the debate as well and on other issues like race and religion. Mm -hmm. And because of that, um, you know, I, I, I really welcome King Su. I want him to uh, provide all this intelligent debate as uh, Balji talked about, as King Su mm -hmm. tried to push. I really want it. But I just hope uh, the Singapore government doesn't crack down King Su's forum saying, oh, you know, he's going to create a lot of brutal divisions in Singapore, can't have it. And because of that, I noticed there's going to be this dumbing down of Singaporeans at large when they cannot even debate. I mean, like, for example, in Indonesia, for many decades, Indonesian Muslim scholars have been debating on how do you combine Islam with the economy? How do you have a successful economy in an Islamic way? There's a lot of debate in Indonesia. But a Singapore Malay man told me there's very much less debate among Malay Muslims in Singapore. That's an example of that, you see. But I, so I want more intelligent debate in future. I just hope they won't shut down King Soon's forum, that's all. <laughs> I'm going to go down for dinner. Bye. Yeah. So good. That, that, that is why we, we, we always say that we are no, totally non-partisan. We don't represent any particular political party. But we are very political in the sense that we are concerned about the values and the uh, 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 the, the, the social and political environment of Singaporeans. So we are very concerned about that, but we are not um, we are not party political. We are political, okay? So let's be clear. So, okay, so one of the important topics which uh, uh, Hanshi has pointed out is we need to have that better understanding of global or geopolitical issues, right? Because our Singaporeans are very ignorant about geopolitical issues. So now, so this is a second big topic area. Any others? <laughs> 